we get to work on naming now. Um, and just to keep things in perspective, um, this was our first slide in this chapter, and we saw this long, crazy name for OxyContin. Um, we will not do anything near that challenging, but some simple things like meth we will work on. So we're working on the very basics of this naming language. Um, so we are going to um, take a look at some different molecules, which I've got built for you here, and we have chemical formulas. Um, let's take a look in the margin over here first. With naming, a word you'll hear sometimes is chemical nomenclature, um, and that's just a way of naming compounds, and we agree on it internationally. Um, so a couple things we're going to look for when we go to name. Um, we're going to look for the parent chain, which we've already been looking at when we drew the structures. And that's going to be the root of my name. Um, it's the longest continuous carbon chain or the ring. And these you need to memorize or have handy um, anytime you take a quiz or a test. Um, one means, or one we're going to use the prefix or the root meth. Um, two will use the root F, three prop, four but, and then it turns into math roots from there. So those are going to be part of our names. Um, after that, we'll add a suffix. And that's going to tell us if we've got single bonds, double bonds, or triple bonds. In this chapter, we're going to see all single bonds. And then we're going to use a prefix for those substituents that we've been seeing. Um, and that prefix will tell us how many carbons we have. So with that number of carbons, we're going to use these um, same roots here. And then we'll also see the location on the parent chain, which we saw some of back in this OxyContin. All these different numbers told me where to locate things on this structure. So we'll be using those numbers. Um, and we always want to use the smallest numbers possible and alphabetize our substituents, which we'll see examples of later. Um, so let's start real easy here. Okay, we've seen this molecule already. If we get rid of the hydrogens, because we're getting better with this, and I just draw four. I still like my dots to help me count to four. Um, I can see that all of those are in a continuous chain, so they're all part of the parent. And so if I've got four carbons in my parent, I find four here. The root for four is butte. And then it's all single bonds or single lines between the carbons. So this is going to be butane. Um, that's what's in lighters, um, butane lighters. Next one down, we've seen this molecule, but now looking at how to name it. So skeletal structure, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just pulling those carbons out. Um, I have five carbons, so that's going to be pent. And then it's all single bonds, so that will be ane. So this is pentane. And so far, I'm just naming the parent chain, because that's all there is to do. Um, slight twist, we've seen this one before also are four carbons that we're in a square. Um, the ring is going to always be the parent chain. So just like we colored it a few slides back, that's the parent. If it's got four carbons, um, then I'm thinking butte, all single bonds, ane. But I have to distinguish it from this um, butane. And so I call this one cyclobutane. And that cyclo is telling me that there is a ring present. So cyclobutane would be my name there. Next one down, um, you can see I've got a parent now on these next two, but then I also have substituents on both of them, so something that's not part of that parent chain. All right, and if I was to draw my pen through, I would have to double back to get those, so that's how I know they're a substituent. So let's look at this one. Um, draw it skeletal, one, two, three, four, and then I'm down to a carbon here. So first I want to name my parent chain. I kind of go in this order every time I name them. I see four carbons, but. I see they're all single bonds, so butane. And then I have to name my substituent. So looking at my substituent here, I notice that it has one carbon. One carbon means I'm going to use the prefix or the root meth here, one carbon. But because it's a substituent, I want to add this YL. So this is going to be methyl is how I'm going to um, name that over here in a minute. And then I need to say the location. So I want to check my locations from left to right, which tends to be our default, but don't get stuck there. Um, one, two, three, four. Or if I counted from right to left, one, two, three, four. I always want the smallest numbers. So I see that left to right gives me a two as a location. Right to left would give me a three. Two is better. 
So the name ends up being 2-methylbutane. So butane is my root. The 2-methyl is telling me about my substituent. Um, and you might notice a little bit of punctuation here. Um, so anytime I have a number and a word, I separate those with a dash. And anytime I have a number and another number, which we haven't seen yet, I'm going to separate those with a comma. Let me slide this up here with a comma. Um, and there's no